Ladies and gentlemen, a new snapshot for Minecraft Java Edition 1.14, the Village and Pillage update has been released. As we're heading into the bug fixing and polish phase of snapshots for 1.14, these snapshots are going to start containing more and more bug fixes and less and less new big features, but there's still some new features to be found in this one. My name is Sliced Lime and I'm here to take you through all of the changes in Minecraft Snapshot 19W08A. Before we begin, let me apologize for my voice. I've had a cold the last few days and if I sound odd, that's why. Now, let's start with blocks and items. Leather horse armor has been added to the game. It can be crafted from seven pieces of leather and it acts like other leather armor. That is, you can dye it into various colors, just like you can with regular leather armor. One fix to an item as well, the Wither Rose could be placed on a bunch of unusual blocks like hoppers that's fixed in this snapshot. Let's move on to mobs. A brown version of the Mushroon has been added to the game. As far as I can tell they do not spawn naturally or have a separate spawn egg, but you can get them using a summon command by setting the type tag to brown. Feeding a brown mushroom a flower and then milking it will produce a suspicious stew, and that suspicious stew will be of the type generated by that flower. The foxes that were added in the previous snapshots have had a number of bug fixes. Their eye height and bounding block has been adjusted so that they don't drown when swimming around anymore. And the trust mechanic has been adjusted so that they will not run away from you when they trust you and can sometimes protect you when you're under attack. Unfortunately, these changes mean that if you have a fox in your world that trusted you in the previous snapshot, they will no longer trust you. That's a one-time thing for the upgrade between snapshots. Also, when foxes were sleeping, there was a bug in their behavior that meant they would sometimes still take and eat things even while asleep. A bunch of mobs like foxes, dolphins and pandas could have armor equipped onto them using a dispenser. That bug has been fixed in this version. And speaking of pandas, baby pandas did not spawn naturally, that's fixed as well. Villager behaviors, they did not have a behavior for running away from a ravager, that's fixed in this snapshot. And finally, cats and ocelots would run away from a player, even if that player was in creative mode. A number of gameplay fixes in this version, a lot of them dealing with invisibility. If you were invisible, then mobs would still look at you, turn their heads to look at you, and also in their behavior, some mobs could see invisible players. That included shulkers that could shoot you despite being invisible. This also went for a number of other mobs when they were invisible. So for instance, zombies would see invisible villagers and the wandering traders, and the snow golems would attack invisible mobs. Couple of changes to fire and the campfires. Sweet berry bushes would not burn, that's fixed in the snapshot. And fire charges couldn't be used to ignite campfires, nor could splash water bottles be used to extinguish them. A whole load of visual changes in this version. The turtle egg block model had its texture stretched out that's fixed in this snapshot. Smooth quart blocks now use the proper smooth quartz texture. And the bad omen icon was bugged out in the programmer art resource pack. This version comes with another drop of new textures in the texture update. Block textures that have updated in this version include all of the different colors of stained glass, diamond ore, diorite, emerald blocks, grass blocks and snowy grass blocks, the kind of sides of grass blocks, and oak doors. A couple of mobs have also had their textures updated in this version, that includes iron golems and skeleton and zombie horses. It doesn't end there either, the item icons have been updated for cakes that now have a big berry on top of them, or whatever that is. All of the horse armor icons have been updated, as have all of the gold armor pieces. Phantom membranes have been updated as well as snowballs. Some of the effect icons have been updated as well. Of the ones that are actually used in game, Bad Omen has been updated, but so has Luck and Bad Luck, even though those are not used in the vanilla game. A final visual fix, if you hit F3 and T to reload all of your resource packs, then the user interface will now show you a loading bar instead of the game hanging until the whole thing is done. Let's go through some sound changes. Mushroom sounds have been added. There's a sound for converting them. They have an eat sound. And there's a milking sound with a sound event actually called suspicious milking. And the subtitle is Mushroom gets milked suspiciously. 
One more sound to change is that fox bark sounds have been renamed, they are now called screeches. <coughs> Let's speak about world generation. The village generation has been changed so one iron golem now spawns in the town center of all villages. It also seems that the spawn rate of iron golems in the snapshot is lower than it used to be. This is however a bug and not an intentional change. Also, the animal spawn structures and villager spawn structures have been updated. In addition to this, a number of changes have been done to the village jigsaw structures. I won't be going through all of them this time, but as usual you can download updated display worlds for all of these structures. A lot of the changes are of this style, where the town centers have been changed to include a jigsaw block that spawns in an iron golem. As far as I can tell, the way this works is that the town center is the initial jigsaw piece that gets spawned in by the game, and that means that every village will have exactly one iron golem as it generates. Let's go through some other actual updates to the village jigsaw pieces though. The desert villages have had the large farm updated, you can see here that the wheat is now more fully grown. In the plains village, in addition to the town centers, the church building, the one called Temple 4, had its window being one block lower than it should, that's been fixed in a snapshot, and one of the meeting points that is classified as a house rather than a town center has been updated to get more torches and more cats. In Savannah Villages, the town centers again have been updated, as has the Fisher Cottage. The change here is that a number of the barrels have been removed. The Taiga Village has a similar change. The Fisher Cottage here also had its number of barrels reduced. And there's also a new version of the Medium House at number 1, and I don't actually know what was changed with this one. Finally, in the Zombie version of the Taiga Villages, the corresponding change has been made, and the number of barrels has been reduced in the Fisher Cottage. Let's talk about tech changes behind the scenes stuff concerning map making and pack making. The textures for the potion effects are now split into individual files rather than being one big atlas. That means that if you've overridden the potion effects texture, then you will now need to split that into their own file. The glowing shader didn't reload properly when you reloaded a resource pack that's fixed in the snapshot. And the Mojang logo in the loading screen could be changed using a resource pack. That ability has been removed in the snapshot. On the command side of things, the command parser now accepts single quoted strings as an option. Inside a string delimited by single quotation marks, you can use double quotation marks as a normal character, without needing to escape it. That means that some types of commands involving strings with other strings inside of them, most notably data with raw text inside of it, become much much simpler to write. And those were all the changes in Minecraft Snapshot 19w08a. Remember, if you upgrade a world to a snapshot, it can never be downgraded again, so if you try this version, do so on a test world, or on a backup of your world. If you don't know how to get and play a snapshot, then click the card on the video right now. It will take you to a tutorial video that describes the whole process. And that was all from me for this time. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please help me out in return and leave a like. If you want to stay up to date with all the latest Minecraft news, then please subscribe to my channel, where I do update videos for every new Minecraft snapshot and release. And do remember to click that bell icon to get notified whenever the videos are done. And that's all for this time. My name is Slime. thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.